Hello friends, in this video we will be making cinnamaldehyde via the base catalyzed aldol condensation reaction between benzaldehyde and acetaldehyde. Chemicals required for this synthesis are taken stoichiometrically. The reaction involves use of 1.2 moles of benzaldehyde, 1 mole of acetaldehyde and 0.5 moles of potassium hydroxide, which is 127 grams, 126 ml and 5.6 grams respectively. I have taken a little excess of the 30% acetaldehyde solution just in case if something goes wrong and acetaldehyde vaporizes. First of all, we arrange the equipment setup. Start by fixing the clamp on the hot plate stirrer and attach a 500ml 3 neck round bottom flask on top with a magnetic steering bar inside. A pressure equalizing addition funnel was attached to one of the side necks. A dim growth condenser was attached to the center neck and a penny head stopper was placed on the other neck. The whole setup was placed in a crystallizing dish which will be later converted to an ice bath. 127 grams of freshly distilled benzaldehyde was added to the flask through one of the side necks using a glass funnel. Benzaldehyde has a very pleasant aroma of bitter almonds. Now the dish was converted to an ice bath and the steering was turned on. 150 ml of chilled 30% acetaldehyde solution was added to the flask through the same funnel. To the side neck, a thermometer adapter was attached and a mercury thermometer was inserted. Mercury thermometer is important as we will need to measure the temperatures ranging to 245 degrees C. Now a solution of 5.6 grams of potassium hydroxide dissolved in minimum amount of distilled water was added to the addition funnel. The reflex was then turned on and lot of ice crystals were dumped into the water reservoir to chill the condenser. Once the temperature has dropped down below 10 degrees C, the stopper of the addition funnel was slowly opened and the potassium hydroxide solution was allowed to fall to the round bottom flask slowly dropwise. Always keep the temperature around 10 degrees C by chilling the water in the reservoir and replenishing the ice bath with more ice. Soon you will start to notice dark brown to orange color stuck inside the walls of the glassware. This is the cinnamaldehyde being formed. While the potassium hydroxide is dripping slowly, let's look into the reaction. The carbonyl group, which is an oxygen double bonded to carbon, creates an electrophilic center. Electrons are pulled towards it, making the hydrogen atom on the alpha carbon more acidic than the others. Strong bases can remove this hydrogen, forming a carbanion intermediate, which will get rearranged to form the super reactive enolate ion. Next, the nucleophilic enolate ion reacts with the carbonyl group of the other aldehyde that is benzaldehyde forming the alkoxide intermediate which then gets protonated to form the uncharged aldol addition product. The aldol then loses a molecule of water forming the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound which is the cinnamaldehyde in our case. Once all the potassium hydroxide is added, ice bath was removed and the flask was allowed to come to room temperature. Steering was then continued for 4 hours. You can see when the time passes by, the color of the solution slowly darkens and a deep yellow color results. After 4 hours, you'll notice that there is not much change of color in the solution. Then the contents of the flask was poured into around 1000 ml beaker. The pH of the solution was tested and found to be alkaline. So glacial acetic acid was added dropwise to neutralize the mixture. After it is neutralized, there is some precipitate which will get dissolved after adding some distilled water. So I added about 100 ml of water and the mixture was stirred for some time and the stirring was stopped. Soon you will see the precipitate is dissolved and two layers has formed. An aqueous layer on top and an organic layer on the bottom. The mixture was then transferred to a separate tree funnel and the lower organic layer was collected. The organic layer contains a mixture of unreacted benzaldehyde and cinnamaldehyde. The aqueous part was then extracted twice, each time with 25 ml of diethyl ether and the ether layer was transferred to the crude mixture of benzaldehyde and cinnamaldehyde. 
Finally, the flask containing cinnamaldehyde, benzaldehyde, diethyl ether, and some water was set for simple distillation. Initially, diethyl ether starts to boil and contents down at 34.6 degrees C. After all the ether have passed over, the temperature spikes to 100 degrees C in the thermometer and the residual water starts to pass over the condenser. After all water had distilled over, temperature starts to slowly climb and an aluminium foil was used to insulate the apparatus. The thermometer now reads 178 to 180 degrees C and this causes the benzaldehyde to pass over from the flask. Here you can see the benzaldehyde being collected in a beaker. After all the benzaldehyde boils over, the substance that is remaining in the flask is cinnamaldehyde. You can actually stop the distillation here as cinnamaldehyde has much higher boiling point and the stuff that is in the distilling flask is relatively pure form and you can use that for most purposes. But I decided to go that extra mile of 245 degrees C. I put trust on my heating mantle and continued heating and soon it reached 245 degrees C. Here you can see pure cinnamaldehyde closing the condenser. It has a very faint yellow color. The smell of the concentrate is honestly not smelling like cinnamon, but I took a single drop of the cinnamaldehyde in around 50 ml of water and agitated the mixture. Immediately the pleasant aroma of cinnamon was completely lingering in the workspace. I collected the distilled pure cinnamaldehyde around 24 grams. I know the yield is very low, it was like less than 20% yield. The amount that was remaining in the distilling flask was much more than after distillation of benzaldehyde. But after distilling the cinnamaldehyde, it is as if half of that just got distilled over. But whatever I got is very pure and beautiful cinnamaldehyde. That's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed my video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description. So once again, thank you. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications regarding my new videos. Thank you.